No means no. Today I'm talking about the issue of consent in sex. Welcome back to down under and south of the border. A few weeks ago, while I was on weekend leave, I went to a, uh, a sex club, as one does. And, you know, I was having a good time. I went into a room that I should not have gone in. It's dark. I looked around. I didn't think there was anyone in there, but there was. Uh, I slipped and I fell after it finished. I went to the shower for quite a long time. Went back to my hotel and I got uh, very, very drunk. Once I got back to rehab, I was taken to hospital. I had a sex checkup, put on anti-HIV medication just in case. I still don't know how I feel about all this. Like, I'm angry at myself for drinking after it happened. Uh, I'm angry at myself for getting myself into such a dangerous situation. And I'm really angry that I didn't fight back. But as for the people who did this, I just, I feel nothing. Um, I've suffered sexual abuse, rape, domestic violence for like too long, as long as I can remember. After so many incidents, like you just start to feel like, yeah, it's a terrible traumatic event, but it's like a traumatic weather event, a tornado, a tsunami. Why do I still live in the tornado belt? So although I felt really bad initially, especially after getting drunk, that's not what I do anymore, man. Not to just get rid of feelings. That's not what I'm about. I took a week to grieve. I took a week to cocoon myself uh, in my room and to process what happened. But I gradually left that dark place and started to do normal things. I started to eat, I started to sleep normal times, I started to bathe, I started to just start partaking in life again. I still have my dark moments, but I've received the all clear from the doctor, so everything's clean down there, clean in here. There was no need to self-harm, there was no need to drink any more than I did. There was no need to pretend it didn't happen. There was no need to just work, 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 work through it and not think about anything else. But I didn't pretend it didn't happen. I felt it, felt it all. And I've come through the other side. And I think quite a bit stronger. I'm not a victim and I never have been. When this stuff used to happen when I was younger, I used to see myself as a Terminator. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse. Or fear. Just keep going, and it will never, ever stop. Ever. It was a way of disassociating from not feeling things, not feeling present when the situations would happen. And it was a good tool. Um, it was a very effective tool, but it takes all the color and texture and joy out of life. And you're just a machine, but you're not really a machine. Into my late twenties, I started to see myself as a kind of different archetype as like the survivor of a post-apocalyptic disaster, zombie apocalypse, something like that. I was operating in a world that I didn't understand, I didn't know what the rules were. It's usually filled with pain, heartbreak, violence, and you're never really truly safe. But you do feel things, you feel pain, you feel sadness, but you feel these diamonds of joy, these sparkling diamonds of love, some really treasured moments, moments of contentment that are truly valuable. But it's never safe, it's never secure, and the enemy's always at the door. So, from now on, I'm seeing myself as a new archetype. I'm a thriver. I'm gonna take the shit of my past, of what's happened to me, and make manure out of it. I'm gonna grow from it. I'm going to take apart the DNA of all the trauma that's happened to me and infect it like a virus. I'm going to turn it into myself. I'm going to turn it into my victory. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to thrive. I'm a weed spreading relentless hope and love through all the dark places. Pressing on, getting into the cracks, helping people, helping people with my experiences so they might not have to go through the same get some solidarity to show them that they're not alone. You are not alone. I'm going to be a positive influence on this world. I'm unstoppable. I'm fucking cancer. Thriving isn't the easy option. 
Driving means trusting people, letting people in, feeling the highs and lows. And for me, trusting God. Yeah, that's kind of weird and new. What this experience has shown me is that it's an objective fact that people love me. People actually care about me. That I'm actually a pretty decent human being that has some pretty amazing friends. People that genuinely love me, even when I don't love me. Even when I don't feel that I'm loving or lovable or capable of love or capable of being loved, it's an objective fact that I am loved. Not because of what I can do or what someone can take from me, but because of who I am. And who I am in Jesus. See that coming, did you? I am still very sex positive. I am still very much a supporter of anyone that wants to have sex in any way that they'd like. I think it's a free country, it's a free world. And consensual sex is amazing, it's life affirming. It is a touch of the divine that you can have. Now, on earth, it's amazing. Get in it, get on it, whatever. But what the people that did to me this time and what's happened to me in the past, that's not sex, that's not love. That's violence. That's abuse. People love me. I speak life into people. I help people. I'm a good guy. Although I was attacked in a moment, they took away my momentary pleasure. They didn't change who I am. And they can't take anything away from me. Criminals that commit these kinds of acts can never feel love. They never earn trust. They're alone in a dark, nasty, little world. And they'll never grow to fill their full potential as human beings. They're in hell. If you are suffering from sexual abuse, violence, um, domestic assault, rape, I want you to know that you are not defined by what happened. You are valuable. You're a gift. You are mightily and beautifully made, as it says somewhere. You are child of God. You are a child of the universe. You are divine. You are capable of so much more and you will get through this. I promise. So thanks guys. I know this was a bit of a heavy episode but I hope you perhaps enjoyed. It's not the right word but I hope you got something from it. Please leave a comment uh, below if you would like to get in touch and talk about any of this. I'm not a counselor, obviously, but it's good to have solidarity. So yeah, I talked a bit about Jesus and faith and stuff. I guess I am a Christian now. Um, on the hippie end of things, um, what I get from church and the Bible and all that kind of jazz, I think is it seems very different than what the cookie cutter Christians seem to get. I'll talk to you about that in more detail soon. So thanks so much guys for tuning in. Oh, one more thing. We're going to start releasing all the old stuff. Yes, all the stuff from Mexico and with Bernardo and what happened last year. So you'll actually get up to date and this whole weird time lapse of present, past, present, past will be put at an end and we can all live in the present and that's what we all really want, I guess. So I love you all. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Please subscribe. Please, please, please subscribe. I would subscribe to you. Tell me what to subscribe to. I'll do it. Follow me on Instagram at Cobjack and follow us on Facebook. Please like me. I'll like you. I already do. I already do. Uh, so thanks so much for stopping by. Love you guys. Adios amigos.